So, good evening. He's a bit weird, isn't he? <laughs> so I come from a family of failed magicians. I've got two half-sisters. <laughs> Milton Jones isn't my whole name. My whole name is Milton 79 Heathfield Road Jones. My dad heard you could save tax if you put your house in your son's name. <laughs> what a day it's been! I spent the morning attaching a lock to the front of my house to slow down burglars who arrived by barge. Sarcasm Club, despite loads of people saying how much they were looking forward to it. <laughs> what else can I tell you about myself? <laughs> Where are you up to? <laughs> Half sister. <laughs> with three girls, but one day they found out. <laughs> this afternoon I gave some ice cubes to some junior doctors as their placards demanded. Turns out they wanted justice. I need to, it's just ice. <laughs> Got here by train. The whole journey there was a child opposite screaming. I could even hear him through my wolf mask. And a stewardess got on. She said, Do you mind if I do my makeup on the train? I said, Well, it's still going to look like a train, isn't it? <laughs> and a bloke recognised me. He went, e -e 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 It's you, isn't it? I said, Yes. <laughs> he said, You're probably, probably going to put this in one of your skits. I said, It's not really entertaining enough. Anyway, we were both right. <laughs> Anyone here from outside the United Kingdom? <laughs> so some kind of UKIP rally. <laughs> Anyone ever left Blackpool? Been abroad? Yeah. Where did you go? Pardon? Jesus. <laughs> so where? Pedro. Are you translating? <laughs> Mongolia. Which bit? What's that? You haven't really thought this through, have you? I've just come back from America. Whoa. You should have come to my sarcasm club. All the way across on the flight, my wife was going, Why don't you get an upgrade? It took a bit of time, but in the end I got a better wife. <laughs> Sometimes people ask me where I get my shirts. 
Once a year I travel to the Himalayas. I walk four days into the mountains, climb the tallest mountain. There's a cave at the top, there's a hermit who lives in it. And he orders them for me on the internet. <laughs> My brother, he's in his final year, if he doesn't stop annoying me. <laughs> it's not his fault when he was young, he fell into a snow globe. Managed to survive, just uh, badly shaken. <laughs> My grandfather, he's staying with us at the moment, he's got a black eye. I knew his room was too small for a cuckoo clock. <laughs> Very proud of him. He was involved in a very successful surprise bombing raid over Germany. Hey. About ten years after the war. <laughs> hey. My other grandfather. That's the joke. My other grandfather. We knew things were serious for him when he had to have a camera inserted internally. But he was annoying the wedding photographer. <laughs> My other grandfather. I always remember him saying, you selfish boy. Not long after that, I became a fishmonger. He was one of the last people to have one of the old lead pacemakers. Died quite recently. Lovely man. Buried him with a heavy heart. <laughs>
the job I ever had was washing dishes at an international radar station, but the dishes were a lot bigger than I thought they were. <laughs> that was quite a stir fry we had. <laughs> Don't talk to me about unemployment. I come from a tiny fishing village in Derbyshire. Sometimes people, it's not in the sea. <laughs> Sometimes people ask me where I get my trousers. Once a year, I travel to South America. I walk four days into the jungle, eventually I come to the tallest tree. There's a tree house on the top, there's a hermit who lives in it. He phones the other hermits in the Himalayas. <laughs> he orders them for me on the internet. <laughs> you need to know, ladies and gentlemen, I've spent some time in the secret services. You know, the ones between Swansea and Cardiff on the M4. <laughs> where all the signs are encrypted. <laughs> I'm not in Welsh. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why I lost my job with the MI5 as an interrogator, and I didn't like to ask. <laughs> in charge of an elite squad that we had to put bombs under ships in the harbour and I accidentally filled all our breathing equipment with nitrous oxide. I mean, we laughed about it at the time. <laughs> Maybe it was that other occasion. I woke up in the middle of the night. There was a beautiful woman in my bedroom. I said, who are you? What do you want? She looked at me and said, Nikita. And sure enough, when I woke up in the morning, my radiator was missing. <laughs> Forget it. <laughs> what is nationality anyway? My aunt, she's almost Irish. Her name's Iris. <laughs> I need to ask, what's been driving Brexit? I mean, it feels like the Duke of Edinburgh. <laughs> Britain has always had great cities. London. <laughs> Paul seems like a nice place. Yeah. Where? Fleetwood. Relax everyone, I'm gonna handle this. I've got a cousin who lives in Fleetwood. He keeps all his money under a mattress on the grounds that no thief would ever think of looking in the front garden. Teachers here? What do you teach? 
children. <laughs> See me afterwards. <laughs> Anyone not a supply teacher? <laughs> Teach an actual subject? Yeah? What, what subject? Times one is one, two times two is four, but naught times naught is a small brown cube you make gravy out of. <laughs> I went back to my old school the other day, it was strange being back there. The smell of varnish. The echo of the science lab, 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 lab. <laughs> the memory of the fire engines. <laughs> I was shown into the Phoenix Hall, uh, which wasn't there in my day. <laughs> in my day, the place was run by a bloke with no arms and no legs and no body. Uh, it was called the head. <laughs> If he wasn't available, there was this other bloke with no arms and no legs and no body and a cowboy hat. <laughs> it was Mr. Brown. <laughs> Between you and me, ladies and gentlemen, I was bullied at school. Aww. By pirates, you're not helping. <laughs> Once at school, my bike was smashed up. It was my own fault, own fault, really. I just handed out leaflets saying, bullying, let's break the cycle. <laughs> Sometimes people ask me where I get my shoes. <laughs> Once a year, I travel to the Antarctic. I walk four days into the ice. I eventually get to an igloo. There's a hermit who lives in it on a frozen lake. Although he was supposed to come to me this year. Apparently the babysitter fell through at the last minute. <laughs> and it's lovely to have been here. Strange, isn't it? When you first meet someone, you think, oh, orange lipstick, that's quirky and individual. But when you actually live with them, you find out it's just because they eat lots and lots of spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> Me and my wife, we argue sometimes. You've left the lid up, you've left the lid up. Yes, but what if it's a man, the next person to use the toilet? It's a pedal bin, it's a pedal bin. <laughs> it was her birthday recently. I took her to an orchard in Somerset. We stood for about 20 minutes. Not the Apple Watch she wanted. <laughs> Sometimes people ask me how I know so many hermits. Once a year, I travel to the International Hermit Conference in Coventry. Well done. <laughs> Nick Heater. <laughs> I leave you tonight with this. Never ever do any washing up in your entire life. I've got four rooms full of this stuff. I'm just waiting for a close relative to die and a neighbour to come round and say, listen, if there's anything I can do... <laughs> Have a great night.